This morning, we got some very big news in the lodging industry when we learned that Marriott is buying Starwood, a house of hotel brands like Sheraton, Weston, St. Regis, W, and Meridian, among others, for over $12 billion in a difficult-to-understand stock transaction. We know that Starwood had been trying to sell itself for some time, but I have to say the deal is a little confusing. While the merger will create the world's largest hotel company, it's a vertical colossus. We have to wonder if Starwood's being undervalued. Their shareholders get 0.92 shares of Marriott, along with $2 for each share of Starwood. Certainly, that's what the market is saying, given that Starwood stock plunged more than 3% on the news today. Normally, in a takeover situation, you'd expect the target stock to go higher. Otherwise, why would management accept the bid? Maybe we're misjudging the transaction, though, which is why I'm thrilled to have Arnie Sorensen, the president and CEO of Marriott International, and Adam Aaron, the CEO of Starwood Hotels and Resorts, here to help us understand this deal. Mr. Sorensen, Mr. Aaron, welcome to May of Money. Thank you. Glad to be here. Why don't you first tell me why your stock went up and his stock went down, which seems to be kind of theoretically impossible given the fact that you're giving him the stock. Yeah, well, don't don't try and make me into a market expert because I'm not. <laughs> okay, fair uh, enough. I fair make enough. my effort trying to run hotels. All right. And run a well, hotel, then why is this a good deal company. for both? But we think it's a tremendous uh, deal because we can uh, pull these two companies together. We can obvi obviously get cost synergies. That'll be an easy part. But we think we can get revenue synergies. We think we can get, deliver margin improvement for our hotel owners and franchisees. And we'll end up with a more global company, more dominant in the lifestyle space, with more money to spend on technology, consumer-facing technology, which will help us compete with new entrants into our industry. All of that, we think, is, is very, very positive. All right. Now, Fritz Van Passion, who left the company, uh, in February, the stock was at $78.55. Uh, Adam, why is this better than the company that he left you? And why should people hold on to the combined entity? Jim, you know, we've made a lot of progress this year on a number of fronts. We're growing much faster than they were than we were before. Uh, we cut a lot of costs. We reinvigorated our brands. We added new brands. We got much more asset light spinning off uh, in past and contemplated transactions, $2.3 billion dollars of assets. But when we looked at the industry going forward, we think that size matters. And when we had the opportunity at Starwood to combine with Marriott to jointly create, uh, under Arnie's uh, highly able leadership, uh, the biggest hotel company in the world by a wide margin, uh, we knew that strategically this was a great fit. The, the industry, industrial logic is superb. So then the question is, what kind of price did we get for Starwood shareholders? Uh, and we thought we got a spectacular outcome for our shareholders. Uh, not well understood today because the, the, the transaction is pretty complex. Yeah, it's complex. There are, I mean, four, the there are four different components to the share price, but we think the value our shareholders are getting is far superior to a standalone case, an energized standalone case. And maybe I should just walk you through the four components. Please of, do, because, I mean, I, I mean you know, my attitude was... Uh, I thought you were doing a great job, and if there had been no bid, maybe it would be higher. So we're getting point now. Each Starwood shareholder for each Starwood share is getting point nine two uh, Marriott shares. Okay. Uh, if you look at today's close, that's just under sixty eight dollars. They're getting an additional two dollars in stock in cash, seventy dollars. They're getting the value of the spinoff of our timeshare business, which will occur pre-closing. Mm -hmm. That's another six or seven dollars. So now we're up to 76, 77. But there's something much more important, and that is, uh, we sold for stock. We didn't sell for cash. Right. We Starwood shareholders collectively will own 37 percent of the combined Marriott Starwood entity. When you look at the revenue synergies and the cost synergies that will arise from putting these two companies together. They are huge. Slap a typical hotel industry multiple on those, divide those back across our shares. This is by far the best way that we can not only grow our share price above where it was trading a few weeks ago, but where we were trading uh, nine months ago and higher still. All right, now, there are some questions about whether this means the cycle's peaking uh, or that you, need, that you need to do a deal in order to be able to grow uh, both from the idea that maybe travel could slow down China, uh, maybe now Europe, but that, of course, you didn't foresee that, but also because of Airbnb, that somehow the Airbnb challenge is necessitating this transaction. Yeah, I, I, think, that's a, I think that's a misinterpretation. Okay. So actually the biggest hesitation we had about doing this deal and the reason we were not very aggressive early in the process is things are really going well at Marriott. We've got a lot of momentum. We've got a lot of great brands that have got great demand from our owners and franchisees. 
uh, we're growing all around the world. Uh, re business conditions in the United States, particularly where we're biggest, are the strongest. Uh, and we see a number of years still of good prominent growth ahead. So one of our questions was, okay, do we really want to step into this, do a $13 billion acquisition, all the integration work that's associated with it? Uh, because our our base case is actually a pretty good one. And do you want all that China? But 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 I mean, I look at you and I think that absolutely they, we do. Absolutely we do. Why is, is uh, something turning there? Well, we we think long term, and okay, you don't make de decisions like this based on what no. you think is going to happen next quarter. Uh, long term, we think that the global travel trends are powerful, and we've talked about this yes. before. I mean, you look at the way uh, outbound Chinese travel has grown, from a million people a year eight years ago to a hundred million in 2013. Uh, I was there just about a month ago. There were 650 million people traveling one week of their national holidays. 650 million people. That's because they, for the first time, have got resources that permit them to travel. And where do they want to go besides traveling in China? They want to go to the destinations they've heard about all the time. Europe, the United right. States, elsewhere. If we can have more brands, more places for them to stay, at brands that are more familiar to them, have loyalty programs, SBG mm -hmm. and Marriott Rewards, that are stronger and that much more connecting to them, we think it is really well worth the effort. In fact, we think it's compelling. And so Airbnb, not really a factor. Not a, not a factor at all in this transaction. Look at what we are creating with these two companies coming together. 1.1 million hotel rooms, 5,500 hotels in 30 different and distinct brands in 100 countries. Uh, uh, Starwood and Marriott combined will be 50% larger than the next largest hotel company uh, in, in our industry. We're creating a company with enormous economies of scale. And when I come back to the transaction, the revenue synergies, the cost synergies are dramatic as we put these two companies together. And that's what Starwood was buying into, the fact that our shareholders would own 37% of that company that would be a much stronger company uh, than either of our companies individually. And yet, each of our companies individually is a very strong company well, today. Let me ask you, Arne, because well, both, both of you are optimists. I know, I know yeah. your work. I know how you are in real life. Yeah. There is kind of a funk going on right now in our country. Uh, it's almost as if we don't think that we can see our way out ever. Yeah. What's going on? Because there's good employment, uh, autos are good, yeah. housing's good, and yet if you listen to people, we're doing terribly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think part of that's our political process and where we are. It is, isn't it? Uh, and so you've got, uh, oddly, the Democrats are in power, obviously, with the White House. Right. But because of real issues around uh, wage stagnation and income inequality and all these things, uh, they're they're sort of talking down the economic progress. Yeah, because it is need to get a hotel room in either your joints. Yeah, I've tried. Believe me, I haven't. Well, that's right. I never I never called you once to get a, a W a Vieques or a St. Regis in Italy. But boy, I got to tell you, yeah. you can't get into a lot of your good well, properties. Well, that's right. And then the Republicans are running. They're out of power, so they got to <laughs> say say everything is is not good, right? So that right. we we, we uh, why why we should vote for them or whatever. Well, what things I are just, things are bad. Things are better than we give it credit. Uh, thank you, because I know that I know your properties. And I know that I stay at both your properties, and I just wish it was easier to get a hotel reservation. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming Thank on you. and explaining yeah. it, guys. Great to see it you. really is terrific. I really appreciate it. But my trust owns this thing. We thought it was ridiculous what happened today. Ridiculous. But you know what? We could be wrong short term. We're not going to be wrong long term. That's Adam Aaron, CEO of Starwood, and Arnie Sorensen, President and CEO of Marriott International. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.